Now what we're doing today is we're going to show you how to repair an aluminum crack that's in a part. The part came out of the snowmobile. It's an oil tank that holds your two-cycle oil and mixes with the fuel. Uh, a number of things could be responsible for the crack. Probably it's vibrations. The snowmobile vibrates a lot and uh, the material just couldn't take all the vibrations. Uh, normally you want to grind this out and drill on the ends. Um, but this is so thin, I don't think we're going to have to grind it. I think we'll be able to just, uh, the heat of the weld will go through. But you're still going to have to drill it. This is a little configuration of what the crack kind of looks like. So the first thing you're going to do is drill a hole past the visible line of the crack. Because where, where you can see the crack stopping isn't where it actually stops. It continues to go through that. The reason you drill a hole in there is so that when you have a linear stress coming through here, it's going to come around and hopefully go back into itself. So you're going to do that on all three of these. Because it did spider web out in one spot. So we're going to drill these out, then we'll, uh, we're not going to grind it because like I said, you can bleed through and then we'll weld it up and hopefully it'll, it'll do a leak test and see if it uh, holds it. But I'll actually show you the part now and we'll get after it. It's kind of hard to see, but you can see where the crack kind of arches there. I'll just put a little dot where we're going to drill. Right there is where one ends. Right there is where it begins. And here's that little crack coming off the side of it. So that's where we'll be drilling. This is the actual part. So our next step will be to do some drilling. First thing you need to do before you start drilling is you got to put a little dimple where you want your drill bit to be. Otherwise, it's going to wander all over the place. I got a little hammer because this is so thin. Line up your punch where you want your drill bit. Just give her a little tap. Alright, there's the holes all drilled. And I forgot to mention this, but I also cleaned it up with a stainless steel wire brush get all the debris out. We're already going to have enough problems with, uh, there used to be uh, oil in this, so it's going to be in that crack. It's going to suck through. Uh, we tried to clean it up best we could. Hopefully, uh, we can burn this and seal it up. Alright, this is the machine we're going to use. It's a uh, Lincoln Electric uh, 350 MP power MIG. It's a push-pull unit, so there's drive rolls in the actual gun as well as in the machine. It's on a 71 right now, which is a spray transfer mode. We're going to flip this up to 99 because it's so thin. It, uh, it's a pulse-on-pulse -pulse mode. So it's designed for welding very thin material. The uh, 1.0 is trim instead of voltage. It, it, it still represents voltage, but it's called trim. And we're going to start off about right around 175 for our wire feed speed because this stuff is so thin. And I'll do a quick little... Uh, I'll get a piece of scrap and try it out on that first to make sure everything's running well. And then we want to make sure that we grind, or ground our, um, our part directly to the ground clamp. Now, aluminum rolling around on a table could uh, poke holes in it. It'll short out and make holes in the, in the part. So we want to go directly to the actual part. After doing a test piece, we lower it down to about 100 inches a minute. This is very thin stuff. It's around a sixteenth of an inch, so we got to take it right down. But we're going to try and get it done now. We're ready to strike an arc on it.
let it cool down for a minute. I just put a leak test on her and it passed the leak test like I said I just took a I pulsed in the middle of it just to give it some meat and then I ran a continuous string around each toe and she didn't leak I know it kind of looks a little rough but a lot of people think that uh, oh, you can just grind that down. You don't want to touch it because if you, as soon as you start grinding it, you'll have more leaks. Sometimes they'll they'll pop up in spots you didn't even weld, so just leave it alone. She's ready to go back on.